take you back to Ferguson, Missouri now, where that grand jury decision not to indict a police officer for the death of an unarmed team sparked protests and violence. My co-host Ann McNamara has the very latest. A man found dead in Ferguson right near the street where Michael Brown was killed. Police have not identified that victim. The body was found in a car, the windows broken. Here's the crime scene this morning. Right now, police are calling it a suspicious death. Not clear, though, if this death is related to the protests that happened overnight. The crowds are gone. All that's left is debris and rubble and lots of it. Ferguson's main road burned and empty, unlike last night when police arrested dozens of protesters. The grand jury announcement led to the destruction of more than a dozen buildings, a lot of them set on fire. Many of those ruined places are actually locally owned stores. Crumbling brick and shattered glass, really common to see there today. One Ferguson woman absolutely not happy with what's left of her community. Honestly, I was appalled that, about all the fires. Like, I expected the looting, but the fires. Others are asking for help. Twitter just full of photos of people cleaning up after last night. Here's a picture of Missouri State Troopers analyzing all that damage. There's lots of it. Customers helping the owner of Kathy's Kitchen clean up her place. That's nice of them. The governor of Missouri, Jay Nixon, sending in more National Guard troops to protect lives and property tonight. Officials and activists couldn't agree on all 19 rules of engagement ahead of time. But one thing they all agree on now is that the protests were just out of control. They now spoke to a member of the Don't Shoot Coalition about that today. I think what happened last night is really a failure of leadership on the part of the electeds. We tried hard, first and foremost, to make certain that they would actually respect human life that they would actually try and partner with us as citizens to create a very different dynamic than what we saw. Instead of partnering with us, with us as citizens, they treated us as actual threats and targets. They came out with, with their rubber bullets, with the tear gas, and citizens who were actually hurt, a community that felt lost and torn apart, responded uh, to what they saw as another incursion by the same military power that just denied them, denied them justice. The mayor of St. Louis says he's expecting more protests in the coming days. Back to you. All right, and thanks. And, and we want to cut to this live stream now. The governor about to address the protests there in Missouri. This is a live stream. Let's take a listen. This is the head of the National Guard. The governor is about to step in. Thank you, General. The Colonel of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, Colonel Ron Reppel. I just want to say that we have worked with the National Guard many times throughout the past years and, and disasters around the state. Last night was a disaster, and we're prepared to, to team up again with the National Guard, with the other local law enforcement, to address this tonight. As the governor said, we cannot have a repeat of what happened last night. Uh, it was very disappointing for me to watch the hard work of Chief Belmer, Chief Dotson, and Captain Johnson over the last hundred plus days, the tremendous work that they've been doing go up in flames, so to speak, last night. Uh, they will work more, they will work harder, and we will work harder, but we will not have a repeat of last night's uh, activities. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, now I'll call the chief of the St. Louis County Police Department, Chief John Bellman. Thank you, sir. I, too, would like to thank uh, General Mason for the assistance he's going to give us. You know, last night we had about 400-plus police officers down there before we called up about 60 officers from St. Louis City and another 100 officers from municipalities. So I think it just goes to show you the value that the Guard can bring to us, force protection, different things such as that. The message here is our community not only needs to be safe, they need to feel safe. And I appreciate uh, Gutter's leadership and certainly uh, General Mason's troops in that regard. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. The Director of Public Safety of State of Missouri, Director Dan Eisen. It was clear that uh, last night was a disappointment, um, a disappointment in so many ways. Um, so much work has been done by the Unified Command in the last hundred days, and um, we deployed many officers out in the area. And unfortunately, there was a group of people who were intent on causing violence and mayhem. Uh, we will do better tonight. There will be a significant presence in the community, and we hope that uh, we will protect the property and protect the businesses of those people in Ferguson and also throughout the city of St. Louis and our community. Thank 
Again, this is a live press conference coming out of Missouri. What you see right there, Governor Jay Nixon addressing the violence that sparked last night after the grand jury's decision was handed down not to charge that police officer in the shooting death of Michael Brown. We heard from the National Guard. We heard from a police chief and now the governor all saying they are teaming up to make sure this violence does not happen again. And we know that you have likely seen a lot of reaction on social media since that decision was announced. Digital producer Mary Kate is here now to break it down. Celebrities even speaking out. Yeah, that's right, Julie. So many people online right now posting about the Ferguson decision. LeBron James posted this photo last night using the opportunity to remind people of the Trayvon Martin shooting, saying, quote, as a society, how do we do better and stop things from like this from happening? And from there, posts have been pouring in. Jeff Ruby tweeting his reactions saying, praying for peace. And many celebrities also taking to Twitter to share their disappointment about the decision as well, and also sending thoughts and prayers to the Brown family. And not only are people posting their reactions on social media, but people are also using Twitter as a way to organize protests. One of the main organizers has over 30,000 followers on Twitter, and he's been tweeting location spots for scheduled protests, which have been retweeted hundreds of times and there's also a website called noindictment.org that has a google map of protest locations as well as inf information on where to get supplies and protesters fr from out of town are actually using this website as a way to find rides and places to stay so i think that all we can do now is just pray that no one else gets hurt yeah, exactly yeah. these are peaceful protests in the future mary kate yes. thanks let's check in on